karuna karuna tarangi takshi dritu bhasham kusha kushpa bana chapam animadi biravritam mayu kahai raham nityeva vibhavaye शुद्ध विद्यांकुराकार द्विज पंक्ति द्वयोज्वला कर्पूर वीतिका मोर समाकाशी दिगंतर निज सल्लाप माधुर्य विनिर्भार्सित कच्छपी मंद स्मित प्रभापूर मज्जत कामेश मानसा नमस्ते and welcome to the next episode of Sri Lalita Sahasranam. So this gives me great transcendental pleasure. <laughs> really, I can't hardly contain myself because this is something we've been working toward for a long time. And we want to give the benefits of these holy names to our viewers. And more than that, uh, we want the people who are coming to our course site to have a good foundation for practice and the good understanding of her different holy names. Because in these holy names, the whole Sri Vidya is revealed. And this is very confidential knowledge, very secret knowledge. You notice the number of views on this video is less, huh? Then, for example, when I'm just like freestyling <laughs> and talking about stuff in my life. And that's because people don't want to do the work to parse the Sanskrit and understand the deep philosophy behind the names. But those who do get access to confidential knowledge that is not revealed in the ordinary scriptures. So this is the advantage of chanting the thousand names, Sahasranam. So let's start with number 25. Shuddha Vidyam Kurakara Dvijapankti Dvayojvala Her teeth, remember we're talking about her form from the head down. So now we're on her teeth. Appear like Shuddha Vidya which means Shri Vidya. Shuddha means pure. Vidya means knowledge. So Shri Vidya is considered as the most secret and powerful ritual worship of Lalitambika. In other words, it's on the level of Karma Yoga, ritual worship according to the directions of Shastra. It involves a lot of rituals and each ritual has its own meaning and interpretation. In our library that we posted the links for the other day, there is an edition of the Saundarya Lahari. And in that Saundarya Lahari are given all the secret tantric rituals connected with the Sri Vidya. Huh? But you have to go through it. You have to do the work to figure it out. It's not easy. Huh? Either that or if you're very fortunate, you belong to a gotra, you belong to a lineage or a family that practices these rituals. Uh, of course, Westerners don't have that privilege. <laughs> but even Indians mostly don't understand, don't know these rituals. And each one has a specific effect, a specific benediction connected with it. So in this way, you can become prosperous, powerful, happy, beautiful, whatever you want to do in this world. And in the next world, you can go to Mother Lalita. So then, Shuddha is considered pure because this Upasaka Marga, or the cult of Sri Vidya, is a worship that emphasizes non-duality. I am that. So most worship on the Karma Kanda level 
represents duality. There's I and there's that. <laughs> there's the small self, the ego, and the big self with a capital S, Brahman. And I am worshiping the Brahman in different forms. And of course, in the Sri Vidya, the form is Lalitambika. So when we worship her, we don't think of ourselves as different. Why? Because she is everything that exists. She's the Prakriti, she's the nature. So this body made of natural elements, earth, air, fire, water, and so on, is only her energy. And even the mind and consciousness are her energy. She is the Chit Shakti, the energy of consciousness. So because she is everything that we could possibly think of as our self, huh? then to worship her, there's no difference. There's no difference, no duality. So this is very unusual that a form of worship is external worship, ritual worship, is based on non-duality and makes the Sri Vidya extremely powerful. Now, the Sodashi Mantra is considered as the seed of Sri Vidya. It has 16 bijas. When a seed grows into a sprout, it has two leaves. Huh? Any little seed that comes up starts with two leaves. Therefore, 16 times two gives 32, the number of teeth in the human beings. See how deep these names are? They're not just names. We're talking about the teeth of the mother goddess of the whole universe, okay? <laughs> Even though the teeth have two rows placed in the upper and lower jaws, the jaws are attached to each other internally. So in the same way, the jiva, soul, and God, Brahman, are considered as different only because of ignorance. And actually both are the same. In other words, there is nothing but God. Everything is God. Only when the, we see the world, that's God with form. And when we approach Brahman, Nirguna Brahman, that's, that is God without form, pure awareness. So the Sri Vidya worship is special because it's supposed to be done in seclusion. In other words, it's not a group activity. It's not like you go down to the local temple and do these esoteric rituals in front of everybody. No, no, no. She doesn't like that at all. And she withholds the benefits for those who do that kind of worship. Why? Because it's based on pride. See, there is no room for love and pride in the same room. See, ne they never meet. Love comes from humility and surrender. I wrote a song one time, surrender is the language of love. Uh, so this is bhakti. This is, this is the kind of worship that she wants. She wants worship that comes from the heart. You know, sometimes people call integrity doing the right thing when nobody's looking. This is integrity. Huh? When nobody's going to give you a pat on the back, nobody's going to think this or that about you, but you do the right thing anyway. So people who have integrity only can approach her. This Sri Vidya worship is very exclusive in its own way. So... The Sahasranama, the first shloka, contains only 32 of the 51 letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. See how deep this is? So the Sahasranama begins with the 32 bijas that constitute the 32 levels of initiation in the Sri Vidya. And you can read all about that in Saundarya Lahari. We're not going to go into it here because these instructions really should be given by a guru verbally direct to the disciple. So, Shuddha Vidya 
uh, representing her teeth, is the fifth tattva, counting from Shiva. Sadashiva is the first tattva, Shakti is the second tattva, uh, Pradhan is the third tattva, Mahat is the fourth, and then there's Shuddha Vidya. Shuddha Vidya is the transcendental knowledge, the non-dual knowledge of the Absolute. So this is very high on the list of creations or manifestations of God. In this tattva, the consciousness of both I and this is equally predominant. I am that. Huh? Through the German, oh, excuse me, though the germinal universe is seen as different, yet identity runs through it as a thread. The, the seed of the material creation is there, but it's not yet manifest. It's still one, it's non-dual, okay? It's within her womb. So there is identity and diversity at that stage. Kriya, action, is the predominant tattva here in this world. Huh? But so the Vidya Tattva is a type of action that consists of Shuddha Vidya, Sahaja Vidya, and Kanchuka. So you have the Shuddha Vidya, which is the complete knowledge of the Absolute. And you have the Sahaja Vidya, which is natural knowledge gotten through the senses of the Absolute Truth. Huh? And then you have the limited knowledge, Kanchuka. Limited knowledge is knowledge in duality based on the senses. So Shuddha Vidya here is the same as Sad Vidya, knowledge of Sat or eternity or truth, the absolute truth or God. While Sahaja Vidya is natural knowledge. It's not a tattva. It's not a principle, a foundational principle of the universe. It's just knowledge that we get through the senses. So, as such, the Sahaja Vidya that's in relationship with the Absolute Truth is known as Shuddha Vidya. So, for example, her form. Even though her form appears to be like an ordinary material form, actually it's not, because it's her form. And so this form is actually Absolute. Now I'm going to go on. 26 is Karpura Vitika Moda Samakarshi Digantara. So Karpura Vitika is a combination of spices, very exotic spices that only grow in tropical places. It's combined with powdered rock candy. Huh? And then it's chewed along with betel nut and put into it, made into a paste, put inside a leaf, a kasturi leaf, and chewed along with the betel. And it, it creates a wonderful fragrance and taste. It even includes edible camphor, which is a remarkable stuff. I've got like half a kilo of it here and I offer some to her every day. <laughs> so this provides the fragrance of the entire universe. And also it hints that she attracts ignorant people by this fragrance. In other words, the ignorant people come to her because of her beauty. But then because of her influence, they get transcendental knowledge and they become her devotees. Next, Nijasalapa Madhurya Vinir Bharatsita Kachapi. Saraswati's vena is called Kachapi vena. It's a special kind of vena usually played by females. And there's a difference, there's a Rudra vena, which is usually played by males. So it produces a very beautiful melody. But in the presence of Lalita, when she begins to speak about Shiva and glorify him, Saraswati just kind of puts the vena in its case and covers it up. <laughs> because her voice, Lalita's voice, is so beautiful and so melodious that 
it, it can't be matched even by the Veena. So this is a wonderful thing. Saundarya Lahari 66 says, while Vani Saraswati is singing with Veena about the various glorious deeds of Shiva, and you begin to express words of appreciation, nodding your head. Saraswati quickly covers her Veena in its case. The sweetness of the strings of the Veena is ridiculed by the soft melody of your eulogistic words. So this is another feature of her beauty by which she attracts the ignorant and converts them. <laughs> Next. Mandasmita Prabhapura Majat Kamesha Manasa Smita means smile, and Mandasmita is a special benevolent smile. Uh, she has this smile. It can't be described really. But her smile is sort of like, come here, I'm going to give you something special. <laughs> so the Kamesha is Shiva. See, so, so she's, he's known as Kamesha. Kam, Kameshwara, and she is known as Kameshwari. They are the pinnacle of desire. The first desire is to create the world. And so together they create this whole manifestation. So they're uh, glancing and smiling at each other when she is sitting on his lap. This is a special kind of smile. Huh? The smita that cannot be uh, duplicated in anywhere in this world. Now, kama also means a dot, a dimensionless dot of pure consciousness, a bindu. And this bindu is part of uh, the kamakala bija ing. Kamakala, both kama and kala mean desire. So the bija ing has the property when chanted, when meditated on, to fructify one's desire. This is a very important bija, and I have uh, happen to be very lucky that my atma bija is ing. <laughs> anyway, so that's it for today. Aung <laughs> Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.